Dead Cells is a game that wears its influences on its sleeve. It's a game about speed, patience, exploration, punishing difficulty, and a little bit of luck. Developed by Motion Twin and clearly inspired by the likes of Castlevania and Dark Souls, the premise of Dead Cells is quite simple. You play as this guy, and your goal is to navigate the elaborate winding dungeons that you're trapped in, killing enemies along the way, collecting gold, and amassing power via the acquisition of these blue orbs called Dead Cells. Presumably so that you can escape at the end of it all. I say presumably because Dead Cells is currently still in early access, and the ending of the game has not yet been completed at the time of this video. In the current landscape of independently developed games, 2D Metroidvania roguelite dungeon crawlers are really a dime a dozen. This is fairly understandable. The genre is very popular and relatively easy to make compared to other kinds of games, and since the concept is so well ingrained into our collective gaming consciousness, there's a ton of reference for new devs to draw from if they decide to make their own. That being said, let me make my thoughts on Dead Cells quite clear from the outset. I highly recommend this game. When you consider that A, the game only has two real boss fights in 12 explorable areas, each of which can be cleared in 5 minutes or less if you know what you're doing, and B, the fact that I've put over 60 hours into Dead Cells despite this should be a testament to its compelling nature. Dead Cells is in an interesting position. It's a game that I consider to have great strengths and great flaws, which I admit is not a very unique description on its face. However, its status as an early access title means that it actually has the opportunity to improve on these flaws in the time before its final release. With that being said, I'd like to talk about these strengths and weaknesses, not only to get people interested in the game, but to hopefully raise awareness of some of the issues in the hope that they be addressed before the final release. To do this, I'm going to break up my thoughts on what the game does well and where it needs to improve into two distinct parts. Since the vast majority of Dead Cells' playtime comes from its replayability, branching paths, and options the player has, it's quite likely that two players could have an entirely different experience with some minor similarities sprinkled in throughout. So to me, it makes less sense to talk about the game in a linear fashion, as it was clearly designed to be more about the overall mechanics that direct each playthrough. One of the game's major selling points is its punishing nature. Enemies can take huge chunks of your HP off in a single hit even with multiple health upgrades, and when you die, you have to start the entire game over. Yes, there are no checkpoints in Dead Cells. When you die, you start all the way back from the beginning of the game, with all of your unspent cells and blueprints lost and a large percentage of your gold cut. This might sound incredibly unappealing to some people, but I want to make something clear. This game is not long. It's densely packed with lots of things to find and kill within each biome, biomes are the official name of the explorable areas, but the areas themselves are really not that large. Plus there are teleporters scattered all around each biome so that you can warp all over them, cutting down on backtracking by a huge amount. Once the game is actually in motion, you'll be shocked by how quickly you're going through each area while still revealing the entirety of its layout. This can be proven by the fact that there's a timer at the bottom right of the screen that shows you your playtime on that specific run. After having played the first biome only a few times, I was noticing that my playtime per biome was only around 2-3 minutes, which I was able to cut down even more so later on. The time factor is made even more interesting when you take into account that most of the biomes have doors with timers on them which will close if you don't reach them within the allotted time. If you do reach them, you'll be rewarded with massive gold bonuses. The combat of Dead Cells is not complex, instead opting to be heavily customizable. You have two weapon slots which can be equipped with any of the three weapon types, melee, ranged, and a shield, and two skill slots which follow the same logic, though skills are more of a grab bag in terms of what they actually do. There's items that you can throw, traps that you can place, abilities to power you up, and so on. With over a dozen melee and ranged weapons and well over a dozen skills, each of which can have a passive ability to boot, there are thousands of combinations of weapons and skills that players can take advantage of. This was a major driving force for me, since I love being able to customize how I play a game. The most impressive part of all this is that almost any combination of weapons and items you can think of is equally viable to beat the game with. The player only has three stats that they can upgrade during the game, health, weapon damage, and skill damage and cooldown. You upgrade these stats by finding or buying upgrades throughout the game. These upgrades raise the stat by one number and act as a multiplier to health and damage as opposed to a flat percentage boost. This makes lower tier weapons and skills viable to beat the game with so long as the player gets enough stat upgrades. To reiterate, the combat in Dead Cells really isn't complex. It mostly revolves around pressing the attack button and dodge rolling at the right time, not unlike another game series. But it's very engaging simply due to the sheer number of options the player has at their disposal. While the player explores the different biomes found throughout the game, they'll collect gold slain from enemies and occasionally pick up blue orbs called dead cells. While the use of gold is probably quite predictable, you buy things with it, the use of the titular dead cells is also quite predictable. These orbs are used to unlock and make upgrades to weapons, skills, and the player character in general. Think of these as the equivalent to souls in Dark Souls, except they can only be used to upgrade gear and can only be spent in one place. All of these upgrades are totally permanent, so in the likely event that you enjoy a certain weapon or playstyle, I'm a broadsword or wrenching whip kind of guy myself, you can enjoy a stronger version of these weapons in every run. Also similar to Dark Souls is the Dead Cells equivalent to Estus. You buy the healing potion and all other upgrades from 
a guy called the Collector who was found in the safe room that exists between each biome. The potion only gets a limited number of uses depending on how many times you've upgraded it and can only be refilled at the safe room between the biomes, meaning that once you run out of heals inside a biome, you're shit out of luck for the most part. Enemies will occasionally drop healing items, but it's unwise to bank on this happening if you want to survive. Everything about the core gameplay and character progression of Dead Cells is very solid, and the speed at which you can explore an area or complete an entire run of the game makes repeat playthroughs compelling as each run will be different from the last. As much as I do enjoy this game, I'd be lying if I said it didn't have some fatal flaws. Though for the sake of transparency, I think it's important for me to say that I don't have a huge amount of experience with roguelites. I think this is important to say because there might be aspects of Dead Cells that I don't enjoy that are staples of the roguelite genre. The act of criticizing parts of Dead Cells could be seen as criticism towards roguelites in general, which I'm not inherently against, mind you, but I want to make it clear that I'm coming at this game from a novice roguelite player perspective. By far the biggest problem I have with Dead Cells is the RNG, the random elements of the game that are pervasive throughout the whole experience. I don't have a problem with RNG in games inherently, but I think the way it's done in Dead Cells is flawed because it seems to contradict other aspects of the game. You see, while you can upgrade almost any weapon or skill that you like in Dead Cells to create a playstyle that suits you, whether that weapon drops from an enemy or appears in a level or shop is entirely random. This means that you could spend all your cells to upgrade a select few weapons and skills that you enjoy, but you might not ever pick up these items during a run, effectively making those upgrades worthless and the cells wasted. I really don't see the point of including an upgrade system at all when you aren't able to reliably get your hands on the things that you've upgraded. It just seems counterintuitive. The RNG also applies to the stat upgrades you acquire throughout the game, meaning that you can't really choose most of the time whether you want to focus on having a huge health pool, having really high weapon damage, or being skill focused. You just have to deal with what the game gives you, which again seems counterintuitive. To the game's credit, there are these blue arrow stat upgrades that allow you to choose which of your three stats you actually want to upgrade, but just like everything else, the rate at which these appear is totally random. On one hand, the game seems to be promoting the development of your own playstyle by allowing you to choose what tools you upgrade. On the other hand, it seems to be promoting the idea that in order to survive, you have to take what you can get and make the best of it. I don't think this was something that was lost on the developers. The game seems very consciously designed to require players to adapt their playstyle based on the circumstances. I like this idea, it's something that works well with RNG and adds an extra layer of depth to the gameplay. The game is already hard, so we're going to make it even more so by forcing you to make it all the way to the end with what you're given. But the fact that there's an upgrade system also tells me that the developers wanted to allow the player to curate how they play. It feels like the devs wanted to have their cake and eat it too, and ultimately I think this hurts the game. To me it seems that this problem could have been offset to a great degree by including weapon and item shops in the safe rooms between the biomes. I really don't think this would hurt the game at all, it would give players a chance to spend all that gold they're collecting on something they've actually upgraded as opposed to a weapon they may not even enjoy using but just happens to randomly appear in a shop. Earlier I made mention that death in Dead Cells is permanent. When you die, you start all the way over from the beginning. For me, this is one of the most polarizing features of the game. I like that permadeath makes you really consider your actions so that you're punished for just blindly charging forward, and I also like how this interacts with timed doors to create an interesting risk versus reward dynamic. If you can get to the doors before they close, you get a ton of gold, but you have to more or less blindly charge forward to get there in time, which is something you'll be punished for severely if you fail. However, the difference between a challenging game where death is abundant like Dead Cells and a similarly challenging game like Dark Souls is that when I die in Dark Souls, I can be sure of two things. One, that I won't have to grind all the way back to my level of strength that I was at when I died, and two, that death was most likely my fault and wasn't a result of bad RNG. I really can't say the same for death in Dead Cells. When I died late into a run of Dead Cells, it wasn't the fact that I would have to traverse the whole game once again to make it back to where I previously died that frustrated me. It was the fact that I would have to entirely rebuild my arsenal and upgrade my stats, and that my ability to do so was mostly based on randomness. Frankly, this was just extremely demoralizing and killed my motivation to try again. It wasn't uncommon at all for me to die and then play through the whole game once again, rebuilding my arsenal, only to realize towards the later stages of the game that my arsenal kind of sucked because I was only finding weapons that I had barely upgraded or because the stat upgrades I found didn't go well with my current build, or both. It's easy for me to attribute much of the frustration I had with Dead Cells to randomness, which sucks because the core game underneath the RNG bullshit is very, very solid. The RNG factor is what I would consider to be Dead Cells' biggest issue, but it does have some other minor issues. Enemies for the most part are well balanced and reasonably easy to avoid. They have telegraphed attacks and there aren't any I would consider cheap. However, some enemies seem to break the internal logic of the game for no discernible reason. The primary culprits of this are the Bats and the Inquisitors. Keep in mind that Dead Cells takes place on a 2D plane, meaning that when a wall separates you and an enemy, it's assumed that they can't see you because there's a wall in the way. For some reason or another, Inquisitors can see you through multiple walls and floors and fire magic bolts at you from a safe distance. They're the only enemy in the game that can do this, and I wonder if it's because they'd be too easy to kill otherwise, as they have no close quarters combat prowess whatsoever. The bats share a similar issue. Once they become locked onto you, they can float inside the terrain of a level and are invulnerable to damage while they're in there, even when your weapon sprite clearly hits them. 
The two boss encounters of the game are both enjoyable for what they are, but one is clearly more balanced than the other. The incomplete one is a great fight that puts your timing and punishing skills to the test in a one-on-one -on -one encounter. The Watcher is a not as great boss fight that occurs in two phases. You have the main body phase, which is laughably easy because the Watcher is so easy to hit and most of the attacks are extremely telegraphed. Then you have the tentacle phase, which is extremely annoying and tedious and requires you to use guerrilla warfare tactics of hit and run to do damage without getting killed yourself. This is actually where most of my deaths in Dead Cells occurred because the tentacles can come at you from off screen and get a cheap shot in and you really can't take the time to heal during this phase because you'll get hit from below. I think a lot of what I've complained about in Dead Cells are aspects of the game that make it enjoyable to other people. Randomness and luck are core features of the rogue genre, and I have no doubt that most people who play a game like Dead Cells are aware of this fact before they start it up. I want to make it clear that I don't mind RNG in games. I know a world where games have no RNG would mean that everyone has the same exact experience and games could be broken very easily as an objectively best strat would be inevitably found and all the tension drained away. I just think that if you're going to include a permanent upgrade system in your game, then you need to make it so players can actually get their hands on those upgraded weapons. Otherwise, the only option is to deal with randomness or just upgrade every weapon so that you always get what you want, which is obviously unreasonable. While I've spent much of this review complaining about the randomness of Dead Cells, in reality what I'm really complaining about is a core element of the rogue genre. Does that mean that the genre just isn't for me? I really don't think so, since I still enjoyed my time with Dead Cells and what little time with other roguelites I've played, like The Binding of Isaac. There's always a great game underneath the randomness of these roguelites, and that's ultimately what matters the most. If someone like me who doesn't enjoy the randomness factor of this genre can find as much enjoyment as I did in Dead Cells, then someone else who isn't bothered by RNG as much or at all will probably have an even better time. I don't want to sell Dead Cells short. Even though it has one major component that really irritates me due to how much it seeps into almost every aspect of the experience, it's still just one component of the game. It wasn't nearly enough to sour me on the whole thing. I can definitely see myself returning to Dead Cells once it gets a full release, and maybe even before then, once it gets another update. Until then, I eagerly await my next trek into the castle dungeons.